Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss how to mix casual and professional attire. Now, have you ever passed anybody on the street, or maybe have a friend or a coworker who likes to mix it up stylistically by wearing any sport coat they might have in their closet? with a pair of jeans or chinos and just call it a day. Now this is not an uncommon option for many men, but there are actually multiple ways for you to be able to add a unique spin to your outfit so that you can take on a variety of issues that might arise throughout your day. Now from item to item, it's important to keep fit consistent throughout your outfit. Now, I remember a few years ago, I was preparing for a trip to New York City. I was spent what felt like hours scouring my closet, trying to find the best things to put in my suitcase that would give me the best versatility. Now I soon realized that I had selected items that both looked preppy and some that were quite professional, but they didn't quite mesh well together in terms of fit. Now to fix this problem, I had to get out of my head and stop envisioning myself as some sort of menswear cover model and think realistically. I took a moment to figure out what would make the most sense to allow me to look both stylish, but also be prepared for all of my meetings and still allow me the flexibility to be able to explore the great city of New York without having to continue to run back to my hotel for an outfit change. Having the correct proportions in terms of fit will help show you in your best light. It's also important to make sure you're choosing the best quality garments as much as possible. But what do we mean by quality? Now quality isn't always defined by what the price tag says. It's also about the durability and the longevity of the garment. It's gonna be something that you invest in, but how much wear can you get out of this? Now I always like to look for seasonless pieces, as these are options that work well into your capsule wardrobe. Now for more information about how to find and build a capsule wardrobe, check out our video here. It's always helpful to know which items are key in your wardrobe for maximum versatility. Medium wash or dark wash denim, cotton chino pants in neutral colors, solid or gently patterned suits in navy or dark gray, a year-round navy blazer in wool, and great leather dress shoes in black or dark brown, and accessories like a watch, a ring, sunglasses, or even a pocket square. Now it's important to pay attention to the season in which you're preparing your outfit. This will help you determine which colors and also the materials you should be utilizing within your outfit. Now using the list of key garments I mentioned before, and also the color and pattern suggestions that are gonna follow, you'll be able to add more uniqueness and a little bit of pizzazz to your outfit going forward. And when it comes to the season of spring, you wanna look for colors that are light and have a light pastel tone to them. In summer, something brighter and much more vibrant. In autumn, earth tones always look fantastic. And in the winter season, think of something dark and more subdued. Other than seasonality, consider that some colors are more advantageous for some men than others, depending on skin tone, hair color, eye color, and so on. Now you can find our video on color and skin tone here. Now popular pattern options would include stripes, window pane, buffalo check, paisley, and glen plaid. Keep in mind there are also numerous other patterns to consider, but patterns also have a different effect on different people depending on their build. Now you can find our style guide videos for big and tall men and for slim men here. Now that you've got some new inspiration on how to build this new outfit, let's go over some great new ways on how to mix these different materials. Now what many people will try to do is take any kind of a casual pant and mix it instantly with a more professional top, like a dress shirt or a sport jacket. Now there's a correct and incorrect way to go about pairing. This example would be incorrect as there's a pretty strong clash in terms of the formality and informality of the two garments. Essentially the two most important factors to pay attention to here are seasonality and formality. Now here's another bad example. Wearing thin summer weight linen pants in the fall and then wearing a flannel suit jacket and a pair of tennis shoes. Now this is incorrect for two reasons. One, in terms of seasonality, these pants are too thin and will not keep you warm in the fall. They're meant for summer. Now in terms of formality, the tennis shoes would absolutely clash with the flannel jacket. The fact that the trousers are actually in between doesn't help, it just makes things more confusing. Now our dress code primer video should clear any questions you might have about formality and you can find that here. Now here's a correct example. Wearing a year round blazer, a sweater, some dark wash jeans, and perhaps a pair of boots. 
Now here we see the formality and seasonality of everything are harmonizing together wonderfully. Now let's take one more look at those examples again. The incorrect example shows somebody who is not paying attention to seasonality, formality, or how the mixing of their different materials might blend together. Now the correct example shows somebody who is aware of the season in which they are dressing. They're keeping the majority of their outfit fairly neutral, perhaps with one to two pops of color. And here's the best part, it's versatile. Now they could wear this out to a casual lunch, a meeting with colleagues, and perhaps even dinner with friends, and never once look underdressed or overdressed. Now remember, sticking with the neutral tones for a majority of your outfit, and then having one to two accent colors will help everything else stand out. Now that you better understand color, let's talk about patterns. There's stripes, there's dots, there's paisley. What do we do? Now perhaps you may have heard to never mix certain patterns together. But now that you better understand color, let's go over some ways on how you can best mix these patterns. Now here's an incorrect example. Wearing a pinstripe dress shirt and a tie with a small plaid pattern. Now this is a poor choice because both patterns are small, linear, and actually are gonna be fighting for attention. And when there are too many things going on with your outfit, it is visually confusing to your viewer. A better idea would be to try to wear a solid tie with that pinstripe shirt. The reason this is a safer choice is because the pattern shirt is grounded by the solid tie. Now on the conservative side, it's always best to keep it simple and opt for maybe one to two patterns to draw someone's attention. Now you can always wear multiple patterns, but the important thing to remember is to make sure that the scale is different from pattern to pattern so that they're not fighting for attention. Now for some examples on how to best pair patterns together in the spring and summer months, view our article here. It's great to see confidence in your outfit perhaps not being afraid to try a paisley tie with a checked shirt, or pairing your wingtip shoes with your dark wash denim, or perhaps a casual button down shirt with a unique pattern under a suit jacket. These are all different ways. Now how do we personalize this new outfit we're building? Now although it's good to know what rules to adhere to when creating your new professional and casual outfit, we wanna make sure that you don't feel like it's a uniform. Clothing is a form of expression and it's important to know when and where it's appropriate to be expressive. You would not wanna show up to a dinner date wearing a t-shirt and long tube socks. You might think it's a great idea, it's not really a great look, and at this dinner date, it's not the best time to express yourself. Save these unique, creative, expressive items for maybe a different time. One thing I've never tired of with all the years that I've worked in retail is being able to meet all these wonderful people from all over the world. I remember seeing many different kinds of people who would frequent my place of work who really enjoyed pushing the boundaries of fashion. And whether this is through hair color, the amount of fragrance they wore, or their overall outfit choices. One person would always arrive to the store in a cloud of fragrance. Another would only allow themselves to wear one single color, literally from head to toe. Now it's important to be prepared for anything when you step outside in your outfit. However, it's always great to see that unique ring, your favorite leather watch, or a great Fort Belvedere pocket square to add some personality. The goal here is to add a few key pieces to help show you in your outfit without going overboard. Dressing for multiple occasions is something that initially might require a bit more planning. Now once you've found your rhythm in your wardrobe, it'll feel like second nature. So today I'm wearing a light purple and white checked shirt with a button down collar, happens to be wrinkle free. I'm also wearing a dark brown belt with a gold buckle and some bright blue wool trousers and some dark brown shoes and some tan socks. Now the reason I chose to wear the purple shirt, the button down collar, the placket style, and some of the stitching color differences lend itself to being a little more on the casual side. The reason I opted for the bright blue pants is because the color is a little bit off the normal vein of navy. However, they do have classic styling details which lend themselves to looking a little bit more upscale. You can dress them up or dress them down. And I chose to wear the dark brown shoes because I wanted to have one finishing piece at the bottom of my outfit to help elevate the rest of the look. And also, I love the way the brown matches the brown belt.